So for today's spotlight of the birdies beds, got my friend Gary over here. Um, I'm gonna focus on these <laughs> um, these two beds here. This one, um, these two both have San Marzano, San Marzano indeterminate paste tomatoes. There's a couple others in here. You'll see like a cherry, there's a clementine, which is a two ouncer, but these are mostly San Marzano's. This is the first year I've grown these and um, I actually had did not know that there was a paste tomato that was indeterminate. And so when we talk about tomatoes, there's indeterminate and determinate. And I'm well aware of those from the slicer side of the of the tomato varieties, and I'm not sure why I hadn't thought about it. But the um, I'd always grown Romas, which had a set amount of fruit, so a determined amount of fruit and a determined amount of grow time and grow height, right? Um, and all the fruit would come at once. And for a paste tomato plant, that's pretty good because then you're ready to make your sauce or your tomato paste or, or whatever you're making all at once. But what I wanted to do is I really wanted to try the San Marzanos and when I was looking at them, because I've been hearing a lot of good things about them, I learned that they're indeterminate, which meant that they'll continue to grow and put off fruit um, as long as they have the nutrients, they don't get a disease, um, you know, they, they don't get killed basically. They'll continue to grow, so all the way up to the end of the, um, in our first frost. So with that, um, new variety, having a little bit of um, learning curve with these um, paste tomatoes, I'm trying to grow them in the vine, single vine format that I grow the others like the lower and lean. This first bed was going to be let them go bushy. But that had, I could not actually handle that. So um, we, uh, I was late getting the um, cages on them, the really the upside down, the big massive cages on them. And then um, I was gonna do a comparison to lower and lean over here. So this one does have a couple extra vines on them. Um, one or two of them have, have a split vine here. So you can see the split here on the vine. So I had to tie up both. And so by the time I was able to switch plans and try to cut these back into a more of a single vine type um, and allow them to go straight up, um, I had to actually add a couple extra strings in here um, or tie them a little bit differently. This has not been a very fantastic tomato year um, in the sense of I'm getting tons of tomatoes, um, but I've been having a lot of blossom end rot issues and we have had intense heat and no rain, and I'm saying that after a rainstorm. Um, we finally have gotten some rain in this past um, a week or so, but there's been zero rain. It's been crazy swing, temp swings of really hot, you know, high 90s for a good few days um, or a week, and then it would. we had cold before that, um, so we were getting into the 50s at night, and so, the tomatoes have been a little cranky um, and I've been noticing signs of early blight that I need to prune off and when you're pruning off early blight you have to be very careful to clean your cutters, clean your hands before you move into the next plants, right? So um, there's definite tricks there. Um, by growing them in this vertical format I'm hoping that I can get ahead of any of that early blight, um, otherwise both of these beds um, will go away very quickly because I don't want the blight to hit um, over on the big bed, the super bed that I did, uh, kind of featured yesterday. So definite learning curve. I've um, Last year I got blight on my Romas also, but those were out in the field garden and I did get early blight. Brand new garden out there. They did have um, splash from the dirt. Um, so one of the things that you can do is try to put a cover down, which I spoke about, I think, in one of the earlier videos. I was going to put straw down everywhere and I did not get to it this, this year and it's already end of July, so I'm not sure it's worth it at this point. Um, but the good news is that the Blossom End Rot is not on all tomatoes and I do have some pretty gorgeous, gorgeous ones in here. In this bed, I also have um, 
basil, which I need to top these seed pods off so they'll keep on growing. Um, I have basil scattered throughout the bed. I've got some alyssum. It did not do as well in this bed, which I thought was really interesting. Um, parsley, um, some of the stock, the flowers. Uh, I've pulled out most of them. I need to pull that guy out. There's some weeds in here too. The, um, this bed, the onions were planted much later, uh, and so they're still, still growing. Um, hopefully they'll get much bigger. Um, and what else do I have in here? Oh, the ageratum. I do need to deadhead those, and those have not done very well in this bed either, which I found very interesting. Um, so I'm definitely watching that. But overall, this is really focused on the San Marzanos for this bed. Over here, it's very similar. You're gonna notice tons of onions in this bed. And so, um, one of the things about the onions was that I was really, really hopeful that I could be self-sufficient for a whole year in onions and have all our own onions stored. And because of the amount of canning that we do, it makes it really um, <laughs> hard to make sure that we have enough onions. And last year was the first time I grew onions from seed. And I wanted to make sure that um, I had plenty and they didn't all die on me. You'll see onions in the next bed I'll, I'll feature next. Um, but this one, um, I planted between all the beds well over 1,200 onions, I believe. Um, so you're gonna see onions in every bed. The other thing about that is for the birdies beds, these are only 15 inches off the ground, and um, uh, which makes them pretty easy access for my friends like Gary or some of the other bunnies that are around, um, as well as deer, right? So um, one of the things that uh, I tried last year that worked really well actually to keep the pests down a little bit was to border these small, shorter beds with onions. So, the good thing was is that um, this has worked really well. Um, it also gives me something to grow underneath the onions and they're not going to compete that much with the roots of the tomatoes, which is great. Um, and overall, I've seen it work pretty, pretty well. Um, the, yes, bunnies will get in here, but they're not eating um, everything out of these beds. So um, it has been overall pretty successful. Um, considering the amount of bunnies I have. Um, I do have uh, some bunnies nests in the beds, um, but they don't eat the stuff in the beds. So I guess, you know, you take and win and lose, right? Um, over here, I also have um, the uh, clementines, the two, uh, two ounce slicer. And this one over here is called a torahina cherry. Um, the two ouncers, the mini slicers, um, I've got another one, Mountain Magic, in the next bed. Um, those have been huge hits um, for Jace. He absolutely loves them. They're a perfect size tomato to slice up for one sandwich. You don't have that half a tomato left. So here's the other two ounces, and I really need to prune more of the clementine. And these are the Mountain Magics here. And I think this is a big beef here as well. Here's where the bunny's nest was. They kind of pulled the grass over top of it. Uh, I don't think there's actually babies in there, but I didn't want to take any chances. Um, so my, when I come in and prune, I'm going to be pruning everything from here down that's not a fruit set to give you an idea and these ones have the spools so we've already lowered and leaned these tomatoes so this tomato plant here in the front here is actually rooted in the back over there so we do have tomatoes in another bed over on the tunnel, which I will feature 
later this weekend. Um, the other thing I should mention is that I do, as I'm pulling onions, I'm going to be planning for our fall, pl uh, our planting, our fall plantings in here. And so as these little necks break, they fall over. Yeah, it's really tiny. Um, my red onions did not do very well this year. Um, I'm going to be putting um, transplants of lettuce and basil and beets and radishes and um, uh, probably kale, um, carrots, a bunch of things um, will be going into these open spaces that you see. I still need to make sure with this bed, since this is a lower and lean bed, that the the space right underneath each of the plant is done, is saved because when I lower and lean them, um, that's where I need to lay down the vines. This is a little bit of a different type of garden tour because I wanted to really focus on a couple of the different beds and what I'm planting in there. Um, I do try to put flowers in here. One thing that I did miss this year was um, growing my zinnias early. Um, so my zinnias have transplanted out a week or so ago out into the other beds. I don't have them in the middle of the center giving that gorgeous color that I did uh, last year, um, which I'm pretty sad about. But the ageratum and the alyssum have done, um, have done well, and the stock did really nicely when it was blooming. It's an earlier flower plant. I do have some marigolds growing that are a little bit late um, as well, because I marigolds and um, zinnias and sunflowers are the, the three flowers that I did not do very well on this year. Oh, one other thing I should mention was this plant. This one I thought was pretty funny. So I've seen the, um, the tomatoes that just have the curls and stop fruiting and the ones that stop like, you know, growing and pretty much die. Um, this one stopped at this height and then it sends up all these shoots like um, normal suckers, but every sucker is a fruit set. And so this one plant is more like an apple tree, if it makes any sense. Um, it's not growing any, any taller, but all this fruit just keeps on coming. And so I haven't seen this be happen before. I'm sure some of you guys have. Um, there's some leaf curl right now after the storm. But uh, other than the fact that it won't grow up. Um, everything has been pretty healthy on this plant. I've been trying to prune it because um, making sure that it can still get airflow through these uh, cluster is important. Um, but I did find that funny. We picked like three or four tomatoes off of this. This is a mountain magic. Um, but I, I do find that uh, kind of amusing. Um, so. Now you guys have seen this bed over here on my right. Um, we did that tour yesterday and then these three beds of um, tomatoes, the San Marzano's, a cherry, and the Mountain Magics, and Clementines, all the two ounces. Thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe and I will be getting into some of the other Beds very soon. We'll have a lot of peppers coming up. Thank you. Happy gardening.